Hi, I'm Gabriel Hernandez. This is Watcher DM, and today we're going to cover the adventure guide for Drawn from the Margins, a adventure for Troika by Austin Holm. This book is dedicated to Austin's child, Harriet. Before we get started, I'd like to remind you to click like and subscribe if you want to be notified when there's more videos. You can click the bell icon for that. If you'd like to support our works, you can purchase any of these at DriveThruRPG, at itch.io, at WatcherDM.com, or you can come and join our Patreon at Patreon.com slash WatcherDM. All right, let's get into it. So Drawn from the Margins, published in 2022. It's an interactive PDF, if you have the PDF. It's also available in print, and it's relatively long. It's 74 pages. The book was created for the Illuminated Manuscripts Jam, so all the artwork in here is from illuminated manuscripts that were curated and put together by Austin and myself. The introduction is that Inkwell Abbey boasts the greatest scriptorium in this sphere, and it is kind of an art abbey. Albert Fong is a incorrigible doodler who fills the margins of his manuscripts with strange monsters, happy animals, and a whole bunch of rabbits and snails. That would be fine, except that Albert is unknowingly a sorcerer and some burst of wild magic has brought his images to life that basically has ruined the abbey the monks that have survived are shelter now shelter in the nearby inkwell village their story has alarmed the peasants and the local lords approach with their armies to erase the marginalia creatures they arrive tomorrow at dawn so that's the clock this adventure needs to be finished before the following dawn the villagers won't wait that long. They seek brave heroes to clear out the monastery. The surviving monks want their hostage brothers rescued from the strange rabbit folk that have taken over the hills west of the abbey. Albert Fung begs you to resolve the situation without violence. He doesn't want his creations being killed. For this adventure, we've created six backgrounds so that the PCs, when they're creating, can roll on the normal backgrounds table, or if you would like, they can roll in these backgrounds, or they can just pick one. These are kind of keyed off of what is available in this adventure. So you've got the local kinkster, the naughty monk, the cat fan, the lost nudist, the piper dude, and the useful creature. I think the useful creature is actually a marginalia in that it's really just a creature with like a hand for a head. It's special is having no mouth. You cannot speak. You do, however, have a hand with which you can make any gesture you like. Pretty amazing creature, actually. It's got axe fighting of three, which is really high, and a six hand talk language, which is, again, pretty amazing. And so, yeah, these are the backgrounds that are available. I'm not going to go over each of their specials and, and whatnot. You can find those available, I think, for free on the itch page. This is the general map and kind of breaks down how the time works for this adventure. So the creatures spawned by Albert Fong are intelligent, at least relative to the locals, and most speak in the same stilted, overly formal language as the books they were born from. So anybody who's speaking in this region, feel free to have them speak in the these and thous and kind of stilted formal language of biblical medieval Europe or whatever you want to set this as. They should speak like you would read from a book. And they have almost no real-world experience, but have absorbed Fong's common knowledge and cult cultural perspectives via arcane osmosis. osmosis. So, if anything, they will be more like Fong than anyone else. The heroes arrive at noon, starting in Bat Country, which is just to the south here. And travel between zones takes about 10 minutes. So it's 10 minutes to go from Bat Country to Inkwell Village. 10 minutes to go from Inkwell Village to the property dispute, etc. At 9 p.m. it becomes dark. Travel time is tripled to 30 minutes per move between the zones. All awareness rolls and ranged attacks have a minus 2 penalty, and all sneak rolls have a plus 2 bonus. At 1 a.m. the heroes are very sleepy and roll everything with a minus 1 penalty. The local lords approach with their armies. They arrive at dawn, 6 a.m., at that point, there will be no more opportunity to explore the area for any purpose, and the adventure ends. So we start by breaking up the map into East Inkwell and West Inkwell. In Eastern Inkwell, you start with the Bat Country, Inkwell Village. There is the Mob, the Animal Collective, the Inkwell Abbey, Bathing Cats, the Abbot's House, 
fishing pond and the hospice. And then the abbey kind of gets its own section. So backcountry just has some of these bat creatures that have escaped the marginalia. Dealing with them by the party will kind of get the get them they can follow the monks into Inkwell Village. Otherwise they're eaten by these strange creatures if the party does not intervene. So the monks will die. Inkwell Village has the setup for the adventure. So everyone knows that the army is on its way and due to cross the Blackwater at dawn tomorrow. The peasants aren't willing to wait that long, and the monks consider the armed classes to be burglars and bullies. Everyone wants the situation resolved before the lords show up with their armies. You can buy knives here and other weapons. Gourds, ink, and bales of unspun wool are the village's only products, so you can buy those things. There's really no place for the party to sleep, and realistically, the party doesn't really have time to sleep, given the importance of how quickly things need to get sorted out. The calls to adventure here are bring back my boys, let God sort it out, and get in the book. Get back my boys is getting the missing monks, so trying to recover the missing monks. And there's 60 silver pence for each hostage that can be safely recovered on the table. Let God sort it out is basically five pence for each slain creature. So if the party just goes in and starts slaying creatures, the marginalia... They can be rewarded five silver pence for each one. And get in the book, the hereditary authorities are about to wipe this new life out. The army arrives at dawn tomorrow. Preserve as many of these creatures as possible. Fong will pay you 12 silver silver pence for each creature you save once he's free from the stocks. So if the party can save a creature by getting them back into the book, great. If not, and they kill them, it's five. So it's 12 versus five. Then... We go to the mob, which is in between Inkwell Village and the Abbey. These cartoonish-looking people are clearly images brought to life. Currently, they are involved in the group murder of one of their own, a self-portrait of Albert Fong. Everyone has a faint smile and makes casual conversation, including the thoroughly stabbed victim. They explain that Albert is a lazy daydreamer and deserves to be stabbed. The foe Albert, sleepily, will agree. If untroubled... They will, they will be occupied with his murder until the army shows up. All five, including the foe Albert, will fight to defend their right to mob justice. They will not go gently into the blank book, but if two are slain, the survivors will surrender. So, again, kind of a starter where it's like a mock of what is happening in Inkwell Village, except the mob is just murdering Albert, who is there kind of into it. So it's kind of a fun opportunity to play on the caricature of Albert and the caricature of this scenario. Property dispute is the uh, encounter over here to the uh, west. And this sees a nude man armed with an axe chasing a pig wearing pants. I'm not going to read each of these, but effectively, you know, you can get these guys. (laughs) There's all kinds of solutions to to these things here. The Animal Collective is a super fun series of encounters with a bunch of woodland creatures, and they're having a party. And basically, this is an opportunity for the party to get some more creatures into the blank book. But I think the later the party shows up here, kind of the better, as the longer the party goes, the more willing the attendees are to leave. The Bathing Cat encounter is up here in this pond. She will not get out, not for the blank book, the army, catnip, or even a cat election. Spending an hour bathing in this cat's pond restores 2 to 6 stamina. This is like the party's opportunity to kind of recover health. Then you get the abbot's house, where there's a a porcine paladin here and a papal pig who has already converted a camel. He greets the heroes with good news. Their souls are saved if only they will bow to his porcine grace. Refusal to do so will be met with a lecture about the respect due to the clergy. Still, he will not press the issue unless he thinks the heroes are weak enough that he might get away with it. The papal pig has some dreams. He will offer the PC's quests. Killing the cardinal fox by the fishing pond, convincing the wolf pig it is a pig and belongs to the stone fellows, or to convert the pants-owning pig. So basically, if you can get all the pigs kind of lined up, then he will join, he will lead his flock and join the book. This is kind of how to get the the pigs back in. Once you're inside the actual abbot's home, 
his holy hoggishness has rooted and torn through the apartment, but there still remains some provisions, some silver pens, key to the wine cellar, and some letters. The next encounter is the fishing pond. There's a cardinal fox here. He's basically the antithesis of the papal pig, and he has found a cardinal's hat and some religious authority and is lecturing birds on the moral virtue of being a prey animal. I'm, I'm pretty sure you have to you have to kill this one to get to get through him. The next encounter is the hospice, where the devil doctor and the doctor dog both perform medicine. This is a really, really fun doctor dog prescribes table that can be used in all kinds of different ways. There's also a way to get a throat frog to come out of somebody and you have to deal with them. I think it's this throat medicine here, yeah. Suddenly you cough up 1d6 throat frogs. They're as happy as they are hostile. Yeah, some really, really fun medicine effects here. The devil doctor demands to be paid in your immortal soul, but if that price is too dear, he will work for cheap, offering healing for six silver pence. So he will actually heal you. And he rubs your eyeballs in a way that can only be described as lecherous, and that's how he heals. It's actually really fun to see people pick the dog over the doctor. I've seen that many, many times. There's also a sick cat here who is faking ill to be near the doctor, the dog, whom she loves. If you can resolve this tension, uh, you can get her boat in the cat election. Then we go into Inkwell Abbey. It's a spacious, solid building made of modest but hardy materials. The monks are long gone, and the abbey is now the domain of the strangest of the escaped marginalia. Narthex is in area one here. So this is the kind of patio section, the porch he calls himself Torsor. He's terribly distraught. One of the monks earlier called him a hideous beastie, and it's really gotten under his skin. So he's just been eating monks until he can find a head. So if the party can provide him with a head, he'll join the abbey as a lay brother. If he wears a decapitated head, the monks will refuse this offer. So finding a, a usable head for Torsor is, is the only solution to that. Otherwise, you can kill him. In the chapel which is area two here. It's just a massive hull, and there's kind of just debris and ash and a, some coral sheet music. In the cloistered garden, which is three here, you've got some mandrakes from, from the garden and some catnip. The monastery dorms are over here, four, and they are haunted by a foot-looking demon. And there's some stuff, some, like, belongings that can be found but not much six is the library one of the escape marginalia torched to this room nothing remains and the shelves will collapse the lay dorms which is seven here basically these are for the untrusted peoples who were like helping their personal belongings can be found here the sacristy which is eight room eight here is meant to contain the abbey's valuables there's also a bunch of treasure in here but the ring wolf is quite a fight. He's pretty nasty. Stamina 11, skill 8, 4 initiative. He fights as a modest beast. And then in the chapter house, the room next door, there are a bunch of false monks arguing over who gets to be Cheswick. That's all these guys here. The wine cellar, which is locked. Again, you can get the key in the abbot's house. There's a skeleton. You can roll here on what he is doing, or he's kind of like his main, but like a carousing roll. And otherwise, there's bottles of wine, a wine barrel, and that's, those are available if you can get the skeleton in there when he's asleep. In the scriptorium, this is kind of ground zero for the whole event. And there is a giant floating head of Alpha Ong, who is here. And so, yeah, Alpha Ong appears with giant teeth and prehensile tongue as a large beast. He's acutely aware of his new mortality. He considers the blank book his best chance at immortality, but is worried that it might be destroyed if it remains in the monastery. So convincing him to get in the book shouldn't be too hard. The next room is the toilet, where manicules will attack. The next room is the kitchen. There is a bunch of stuff in here, including an industrious cat who can make butter. If the party can get butter and eggs, all the other ingredients to make cake can be found here. The refectory is the dining hall, and there's a creature in here that basically just wants to die, and so I think best to just kill them, the Lamia. The king of the cats is then described in the next. So the warming room 
is where the cat election is happening. And so this kind of starts the quest for who's going to win. Is it the king of the cats or the dark lion? The outcome of this will impact a lot about how the different cats in the game interact. That's it for Eastern Inkwell and the Inkwell Abbey. And then you go into the Inkwell Hills, where the rabbits have run off into the wilds with the worms and snails and have taken monks hostage. Now, I say that, but the first encounter leaving is actually the two lions. These are some more cats that will not really consider getting into the blank book uh, or voting in the cat election. Just a, an interaction here with some alleged lions. <laughs> the next is the Worm Knight. This range of the hills belongs to, not to the rabbits, but to the Worm Knight. This crawling and frequently weeping warrior despises his weird hybrid body. He lashes out in violence, degrading himself verbally as he battles the heroes. If he is complimented and appreciated, he will become peaceful and swear fealty to the person who bolstered his self-respect. And then you get the rabbit land border, where a rabbit cavalier is sitting atop a cockatrice. Then you've got the rogue snail, who is attacking an innocent knight, arguably. Sir Galantry and the snail here. The snail is mostly just aggrieved that his territory is being invaded. He will not back down. Execution Hill is where a rogue rabbit is executing a monk. The knight and the snail is Sir Chivas, is going up against a snail. And if he is pressed on this, he challenges his interrogator to a single combat by slapping them in the face with a knitted glove. You've got a strange cavalier here, which is a knight rabbit and a snail mount. Sir Chivas can be lured here, so this is again just some more jousting. And then you get into the pasture lands. The pasture lands, you roll a d6 as the PCs search through the pasture lands, kind of this area up here. They can find Blackjack, the interrogation, the recaptured escapee. Club Rabbits or the Chopping Block. This is where they're going to want to recover the monks. So basically, if the party wants to try and get monks back, this is the best place to get them. And this is where Abbot Schwine is. And he's literally on the Executioner's Block when they arrive. So each area is covered with lots of encounters, lots of things that can go on. And then all the Marginalia creatures are either safely in the blank book or employed or welcomed by the monks or dead. And the army will turn back in a huff as soon as it arrives. Everybody can get their rewards. And then we've got some, these are like reference pages. So if you're looking for, if you're looking at the map and you want to know which page those things are on, we've got a little brief for each thing. Again, the Inkwell Abbey and then the Inkwell Hills. And we've got a bestiary with all the stat blocks and descriptions of the monsters in the back there. These are image references, including the, where to find the different marginalia. So what uh, manuscripts they were found in, and then legal information and our Troika compatible logo. So yeah, that is drawn from the margins. If you've had an opportunity to play it and you'd like to tell us your story, we would love to hear about it. Please sound off in the comments below. Otherwise, I hope you will enjoy the video and I hope you will get a chance to play this in the future. And you should stay weird.